Welcome. We have a big ski water block for the Asus Tough RTX 4080. In this episode, we will unbox the big ski water block and then install it onto the RTX 4080 Tough PCB. We will then install the card in our test system, fill the custom loop, and perform testing to obtain thermal, power, and performance results. We will also lower and raise the power limit and undervolt and overclock the card. This is the Vector Network, and let's begin. This Bixi water block is compatible with ASUS TUF RTX 4080. One seal and we can open the box. What's in the box is a bag of screws, washers, plugs, and other accessories. An installation guide and the back plate. The Bixi back plate for the RTX 4080 is aluminum, matte black in color and texture and provides full protection with white lettering. Flip open the inner panel and there's also a bag of thermal pads that are 1.8 millimeters thick. Let's go ahead and pull out the water block itself. Tear off the big C sticker. The water block is covered with an acrylic top layer showing the copper base plate. The copper base plate is CNC machined and 9 millimeters thick. The copper plate has a large area hollowed out intended to reduce weight and protect the PCB from deformation. The terminals are on the top of the card. The water block has a triple layer structure that allows for an increased water flow coverage area. Before installation, let's grab some plugs. and add these plugs to the terminal and also on the other side. The installation begins by installing the stock ASUS Tough I.O. bracket back onto the PCB using the same five Phillips head screws. Next, we can cut the thermal pads to size and place them on the water block. Then, let's apply Noctua NTH2 thermal paste and then we can drop the PCB right on top. The four screws around the processor each require a washer, and then screw in the Phillips head screws in a manner so that tension is applied more evenly. Then there are two more Phillips head screws to secure the IO bracket to the water block. From here, we can install the back plate. The instructions do not indicate any thermal pads to be placed on the back side, and the provided 1.8 millimeter thermal pads will be too thin. So let's place the back plate right on top and secure it to the PCB and water block using six of the provided Phillips head screws. For fittings, let's go ahead and add two EKWB 90 degree adapters and two Coolance Quick Disconnect male fittings. This Bisky water block model number is N-AS4080 Shrix-X and is compatible with both the RTX 4080 ASUS Shrix and TUF models. Click on the link in the top right hand corner for ASUS TUF RTX 4080 unboxing, deshroud, teardown, and thermal testing. Stay tuned as the fill followed by the testing is coming up right now. Let's drop the RTX 4080 into our AM5 test system to use Aqua Computer Double Protect Ultra Coolant in green and attach the Coolant to Quick Disconnect fittings. Click on the link in the top right hand corner for the RTX 4090 Founders Edition Full Teardown and Thermal video. Keep in mind, I had accidentally connected the out from the reservoir to the out on the terminal of the water block. I did not realize it until at this point. And so let's disconnect the quick disconnect fittings and then we can swap the connections. And then give it a whirl. The coolant is used primarily for its color, which allows for clearer contrast to better identify the flow path. Excessive bubbling may be seen during the fill footage for effect. For testing, the bubbles have been bled out and or dissipated by itself overnight and ensure that the coolant is filled to the brim in the reservoir. 
To obtain the results, 3D Mark Speedway stress test was run on an open air test bench with ambient room temperatures at 21 degrees Celsius. Cyberpunk 2077 overdrive mode benchmark may be shown on screen for a change in variety of visuals. For 100% power limit stock thermals, the GPU's core temperature rose 35 degrees Celsius from an idle 28 to 63 degrees Celsius under load. The GPU memory temperature rose 32 degrees Celsius from an idle 32 to 64 degrees Celsius under load. Lowering the power limit to 70%, the GPU core and memory temperatures were 15 and 11 degrees Celsius lower, respectively, compared to 100% power limit. Undervolting the car to 0.95 millivolts and adding 90 megahertz to the core to arrive at the targeted 2,685 megahertz core clock, the GPU core and memory temperatures were 10 and 7 degrees Celsius lower, respectively, compared to 100% power limit. The overclocked model has a 2,625 megahertz core clock speed. Matching that by adding 90 megahertz to the core, the GPU core and memory temperatures were the same compared to 100% power limit. Overclocking by increasing the power limit to 110%, adding 90 megahertz to the core and 600 megahertz to the memory clock, the GPU core and memory temperatures were three and one degree Celsius higher respectively compared to 100% power limit. The 100% power limit is at 320 watts. Undervolting the card reduces the wattage from approximately 317 and 99% to 246 at 77%, a 71-watt or 22% reduction. Frames per second was recorded during 3D Mark Speedway stress test. As stock, the FPS was 71, and at 80% power limit, the FPS was 69, a 2 FPS or 3% reduction. Stay tuned for upcoming episodes as the plan is to install more water blocks onto this ASUS TUF RTX 4080 and to further install it into a custom loop water cooled PC build. Like the video by clicking the like button. If this is your first time here, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. This is the Vector Network. Please click on the bell for a notification when the next episode airs. Click on the links here for more videos like this, including video card and water cooling component teardowns, unboxings, and thermal testing for water-cooled PC builds. Thank you, and I'll see you at the next episode.